It's a good one. Oh, hey, Chris. Hey, Chuck. How are you? I'm really well. How are you tonight? I am great. Super excited. We're, we've got some friends joining us. Uh, it's going to be a great episode. Absolutely. We do have two special guests, but before we introduce them, any good news on the podcast review front? Great news. Uh, we have received yet another five-star review. Um, for whoever was the one person who left a four-star review, I really need to kind of get your stuff together there. But thank you to Wyo Laura for giving us a five-star review entitled Such an Easy Listen. I've truly enjoyed your podcast. I've learned so much from it and find other podcasts related to my CHT career rather dry. Oof. Thank you for the great work. Now, we love that. It makes us so happy to hear that people are uh, enjoying our banter and find us uh, not dry. That's good. Absolutely. And we are taking this opportunity to talk a little hand society stuff. And we have two really special guests. We do. And I will say you're going to talk, we're going to talk to Glenn Gaston and Peter Ree, the co-chairs of the 2022 Hand Society annual meeting, which will be occurring in Boston. Uh, but Chuck, you have some experience in this role. Uh, we talked last time with Amy Moore and John Fowler, and you were one of the meeting chairs, I don't know, many, many years ago when you were a much younger man with more hair. Yeah, the hair loss may be directly attributable to my meeting chairmanship. Um, I thought it was a piece of cake. I didn't think it was much work at all. And I don't know what Peter and Glenn are going to tell us tonight, but I thought it was super easy, not much effort. Well, let's, let's introduce Peter first. Uh, Peter is at the Mayo Clinic. Uh, Peter did his residency and fellowship training there and, and then uh, completed the service in the U.S. Air Force. So thank you for that, Peter. And he is now back at Mayo. He's large and in charge there. And uh, I believe Peter is the fellowship director there. Is that right, Peter? Yep. And Chuck, why don't you introduce Glenn? Yeah, it's my pleasure. Uh, I could spend a many, many hours introducing Glenn. I'll just say that Glenn and I have been friends for a long time. We have many shared interests. Uh, we're both Southerners, although he is on the wrong side of the Alabama-Georgia border. Um, maybe this year on the right side. Uh, Glenn's at Ortho Carolina, uh, runs a great program. And uh, um, yeah, it's my pleasure to call him a good friend. Thanks, Chuck. Fun to be on with you guys. And it was a fun year for the dogs too. And you're right. It's not, it doesn't sadden me one time for finally Georgia to get something over Alabama on the, on the field. So. <laughs> Perfect. All so, right. so yeah, what, what's, what's it been like with the meeting? I mean, what a fun, what a uh, fun experience to have running it together. I'm sure you guys just have had everything lockstep and work is all done and you could just cruise control from here. Right. Yeah. Well, if I could just start um, the, uh, uh, when Jeff Greenberg uh, had emailed me and said, hey, um, uh, I'd like you to chair this, co-chair this, my first question was, who's, who's the co-chair? And luckily, um, Glenn and I have known each other for a while, and we share a lot of common interests, uh, mainly around fishing. And uh, it was just, it was a no-brainer to, to say yes to that uh, offer, because it's such an honor, but also to work with a good friend and just a professional, it's, it's been just a joy. Yeah, I'd echo that. I, I certainly, when Jeff asked me as well, I was excited. But when he told me it was Peter, I was that was when it was a definite yes for me. So uh, I will tell you, and Chuck can, can attest to this as well, having somebody run it with you that is a good friend, that's organized, and that's enjoyable to talk to a lot is a key. So and it's going to be a fun meeting. So I think it's been, we've had a good time putting it together and it's it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, and I would say this. I, I hope everyone realized I was being very facetious earlier. It is a huge investment of time and energy. And it's so the annual meeting is critically important to everything the Hand Study does. And it's this year feels like, I don't want to jinx us. I'm sure no one wants to be jinxed. It feels like uh, we'll kind of be back at normal, at normal uh, meeting status. And I know that everyone is super excited about this meeting and, and the content that you guys have planned. So uh, it's been a huge effort. I, I think you're rounding third and feeling good. Um, give us a little sense about the dynamic. Um, who, who's organized? Who's hanging on by a thread? What's going on there? <laughs> that part has been fun. I will tell you, it's been uh, different. So Peter is your like Excel wizard. 
So he's one of these guys that as soon as something comes out, like I like type up a Microsoft Word document, like longhand, my thoughts. And Peter sends me back like this uber hyper organized Excel sheet, which I'm always scared of because I'm scared if I do anything to it, I'm going to like shift columns or rows and the whole thing is going to be off. So that's been the one thing that's been a little different. So everything comes like now we've figured it out our pattern. Like Peter does the initial stuff. He sends it to me. I add everything in. Then it goes back to Peter for final touch. And he only sends emails directly to the Hand Society. I never send anything uh, to Selena <laughs> or her team. That always comes from Peter as the final authority on the on the email. Well, you know, it's it's like uh, th that may be the case that I send I send the email, but um, you know, I, I I trust Glenn so much, and uh, this meeting is, I think, poised to be um, just one of the, uh, just a great meeting. It's not taken away from anyone else's meeting, but we put a lot of thought into this, and so. Um, it's uh, the uh, uh, planning it and doing all these. Um, like Len and I have had a lot of late night uh, uh, phone calls and things like that. And uh, it's been so much fun. There was a little bit of a learning curve for sure because we're using the uh, same uh, like cloud service. And so he'd make a change, I'd make a change and things like that. So now, uh, now we have it down to don't touch it. <laughs> uh, I'll correct it on mine. Just refresh yours in five minutes or something like that. And it's, it's been, it's worked great. Yeah. Glenn, you talk, I'll type. That's our current thing now, basically. You're <laughs> now, such a talker. It's been fun too. We've built on, I think it's, I think this meeting will be fun for a lot of people. So I think we've built on a lot of the things that have worked well in past meetings and we've been able to add our own little flair to it. So I think a lot of the things people will see, they'll instantly recognize like, oh yeah, I've always enjoyed that. Oh, top five papers this year, different things. But then we've added a couple of new things this year that I think are going to be really neat. We tried to bring it, Jeff's theme was, Dr. Greenberg's theme was back to basics. And we tried to bring some of the meeting back to that old school field that I think some of us miss when every lecture is in a big hall and you kind of feel like you're just another person in the crowd to some more small group options. So there's two of those this year that I think Peter can tell you about that are super exciting. Yeah. We, um, before we started the, the initial planning phase, we looked at all the reviews from the past three or four years. And I never realized how many comments come into the hand society about the meeting. And we went through all of them and thoughtfully try to, um, come up with what the membership would want and actually worked out that uh, Dr. Greenberg's theme was doing exactly that, getting back to basics. And, you know, I think things have changed because um, now you have to give someone a reason to leave work, uh, leave, you know, their home to go to an in-person meeting when you otherwise you can get it virtually. And so we try to think about what are the things that uh, a live in-person meeting, things that we took for granted maybe, um, that we can try to bring back. And um, I'll just briefly mention two, and, and Glenn can expand, but one is um, this really neat uh, uh, session where it's, it's small groups and it's with you and just a leader enhancer, just an icon enhancer. And there's, these are uh, educators and innovators that don't need an agenda. You know, you can just, uh, the plan is they just have an open room with a whiteboard and you just ask whatever you want. And, and these masters can just give all those pearls that, you know, are, are the nuggets that you really, really want from the hand society. And then the second one, uh, Glenn, maybe you can describe our, um, our really innovative surgical skills. Yeah. So the first one's neat that Peter was alluding to. So there's only 10 people per room with one legend in hand surgery and it's round table and it can be clinical. It can be how did you start your practice? Clinical pearls. It could be uh, practice management things or anything. And the second one is the same theme. It's 10 people in one um, position and it's going to be at a cadaver lab. So it's going to be like, for instance, you learn how to do nerve transfers with Jamie Bertelli and 10 of you and just him. And he's going to walk through those pearls. Who would like to learn how to do an MFT with Jim Higgins? Because there's just 10 of you and him. And same theme, Jimbo Tang, flexor tendons, who'd love to pick up their flexor tendon skills. So that was the thought process. And so those are going to be some new offerings. The time with the masters and the innovative uh, surgical sessions, I think are two of the most exciting things we've added. Yeah, we still have a couple of, uh, I don't want to say that we're going to have them quite yet because they're still in the works, but some really fun uh, things that are kind of in the wings that we're just waiting to get finalized and hopefully um, they'll materialize. But uh, again, it's just trying to make it so that the meeting is, is focused on the membership and it's really practical information. Uh, we went through, gosh, Glenn, I forgot how many um, 
scientific uh, papers. We had over over like 650 um, yeah. uh, abstracts that were submitted for eventually uh, I think 86 papers. Um, and then um, a ton of awesome ICL symposias that came in, but uh, but we eventually chose the ones that um, are not so esoteric, things that you um, can benefit your practice, just like really, really good practical things. Yeah, and Jeff had a big focus this year too. As president, one of the things he wanted was to add a little bit more of a practice management options in there. So you'll see a little bit more on that as well this year. So I think it'll really speak again to kind of the broad audience that we're hopefully going to offer this to. This is great. I've, I've learned a lot about the meeting and I'm going to go sign up for some of these amazing sessions and box out other people because now I've got right. the heads up. That's great. Can you tell us uh, one crazy off the wall idea that ended up not working? Uh, Probably some of this, let's see, the, the, uh, we wanted to do Battle of the Bands was a fun one. So you know how we have Hand of Palooza and Mark Barrett's and like the Sagittal Band play? So that's, that's gonna still happen. We're still gonna have Hand of Palooza. It's at House of Blues in Boston. We thought about having a Battle of Bands where we'd invite all the members that are part of any band to bring their band and have like a band war. And um, that we couldn't make happen. And another thing that's not so off the wall, but um, I think would have been really neat. We just couldn't find the way to make it happen. But, um, you know, I think a lot of us that are in the academic uh, sphere, um, I think we're they're just really, really good at um, innovation and things like that. But, um, you know, it's, it was trying an idea of trying to bring the membership that are just in community or, you know, higher uh, volume, you know, private practices that, um, you know, didn't really, may not have wanted to come to, you know, learn about um, kind of like the, uh, like I said, esoteric things. And so we were trying to get, um, more involvement with community surgeons. Um, but that was a little hard to, um, I guess, materialize uh, uh, in terms of uh, getting them involved into the um, kind of ICL and symposia. And, and we hope that with these more small group things, um, you know, someone uh, like Glenn, who's a master at, you know, all the things that he does, may have someone next to him that says, hey, I'm in practice here and you know, wherever. And I do it this way. And it's like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. I never thought about that. So really just a good mingling of just everyone in hand surgery, just to, um, just to, um, like a symbiotic type of milieu of, of, uh, hand surgery. Yeah. And it blended in a little bit, like some of the, a couple of the ICLs this year will look a little different instead of the, the room set up the way it is, we've actually got round tables in several of the ICLs. So even the ICLs are going to have, instead of the panelists all being at the front at the table on the stage, they'll be spread out at round tables with everybody. There'll be pauses where they, it's within your table, you're interacting. So trying to pull people in a little bit, again, that tight knit feel a little bit more than sometimes hasn't been there. It's been a common theme and um, feedback over the last several years. And so hopefully it's a way we can integrate that a little bit better. I love how the pandemic has made you guys think really hard about how to you know, make the, the meeting engaging and appealing to the point where people you know, can't wait to go. Um, so I, I think there are going to be a number of people really excited about the, the format uh, changes that you've made. Um, I will say you know, a big segment of our audience, as you saw from that review earlier, um, are hand therapists. And is there anything in particular you think that would make the meeting super exciting for them? Yeah, the, um, uh, what I think will be nice is that uh, the symposia, which is such a great venue um, just for education, um, I think, uh, I can't remember how many, Glenn, but I think 10 or so of them are what we call back to basics um, symposia. And we really try to get uh, young and old um, or not young and old, but let's say more seasoned and, and more newer surgeons uh, uh, together on the same um, on the same podium to try to say, "Hey, I've I've tried that before. Um, it doesn't work." Or like, "No, actually, like, this is really innovative. We should try it." But then also, we try to integrate a lot of things that um, our hand therapy colleagues could kind of see the evolution of how we've gone to where we are, and I'm sure that from there. Um, you know, there will be great uh, communication uh, to uh, get their perspective on how, you know, maybe 
we're not doing things in terms of rehab uh, as advanced as we probably should. And we've definitely tried to integrate a lot of um, therapists into um, the uh, ICL and symposia. So I think it'll be great for the um, therapists as well. Yeah, I'd echo that. And I think some of the things that will help that, the back to basic themes, I think, help too. I think it's interesting, instead of some of the symposiums being, here's the craziest 25th revision that I did with a free arm from a monkey, you know, it's going to be more like, we gave them topics like, hey, what about a long finger metacarpal shaft that's 25 degrees apex dorsal? How are each one of you dealing with that? Something that everyone's going to actually see, every therapist, every surgeon, as opposed to uh, one of the themes you see in some of the feedback is it's the same people giving the same talks on the same crazy things that I never see in my practice. So we tried to bring a lot of it back to, you know, how are people taking care of, because as all of us know, some of the hardest things you deal with every day are simple problems that you're just like... Do you pin it? Do you leave it? And it's those that almost bother you more than some of the craziest things that we see. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, I think that's really well said. The, uh, it sounds like you guys have struck a balance between preserving the kind of core of what the Hand Society annual meeting is and why we all love to go uh, with trying to minimize the esoteric stuff and then innovate a bit, which is not easy to do for the listeners you know, it, 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 it's hard to branch out and you feel like you're rolling the dice a little bit. And, uh, you know, as a chair, you want to do something different and you want it to stick and you want it to, you know, next year or the next year, you want to be doing some of the things that Peter and Glenn came up with. And that's, that's really the ultimate compliment. So walk us through the meeting a little bit um, and maybe start with uh, some stuff. Uh, so for those of you who just noticed that Chris left, he had another commitment and so we let him fly. So talk us through, we don't want to spend too much time and we encourage everyone to go online to the Hand Study website to see the meeting and interact with it a little bit, but talk us through each day. So we things really get rolling on Tuesday, is that right? Yeah, that's when things really get started. Peter, you help me out. Um, this is all kind of from top of the head here, but I didn't pull up the schedule right in front of me. But Tuesday's a great day. We've got the classic uh, flaps course, that's Tuesday. Correct, Peter? Yep. Tuesday's a flaps course, which is traditionally a very fellow heavy. It usually sells out very quickly. So if you're listening to this, uh, I would encourage you to sign up early. There is also a resident and fellows review course on Tuesday afternoon which has historically been also extremely well attended. It tends to have a good balance of same thing, faculty and fellows and residents at each table and sort of covers the gamut and is a, a great overall review course. Yep, exactly. And then um, on Wednesday, we have kind of the standard um, Adrian Flat the Residents and Fellows Conference, which is jam packed. I went to it, I think, four out of my six years in training, and I think it just keeps getting better and better. And, um, you know, the, the chairs Chris and um, Christina Ward have done a great job to uh, build that. Um, it, it looks awesome. Uh, a lot of cool, innovative things. And also, I think they've kept with the same theme of trying to make it information that's practical for residents and fellows, but also realizing that this is a great venue for trainees to present. And so it's a good balance, which is really hard, but a good balance of, you know, sitting there listening to what their peers have researched, but also really practical things about, should I go into academic medicine? Should I not? And um, how do you get into hand fellowship? Things like that. And then along that, along with that Wednesday, there's um pre-courses all day and I gotta say we spent a lot of time on the pre-courses and um, I don't think we really and I, I don't want to say micromanaged uh, but maybe maybe our faculty our chair may say that but we try to just give very loose guidelines saying hey um, we don't want any we don't want much overlap but here are the topics that we really want um, and you know please pick um, uh, like I said more more veteran surgeons uh, middle middle career surgeons, young surgeons, and let's get a good balance of everyone represent, represented on these panels uh, and, and pre-courses. So I think it's, it's just an awesome uh, set of pre-courses on, um, on Wednesday. Yeah, and we challenged some of the faculty too. And um, Charles, you can know how this works too. And it's a little tricky to do. We tried to limit it to where each person would only be allowed to do one pre-course and one thing so that it's not 
the same people that everyone's always accustomed to. We, we clearly want the top people in the field with that particular skill set to speak on that. We also really wanted to diversify. So you're listening to new people with new perspectives on the same topics. Uh, so we, we limited the number that people were allowed to do, which I think will help. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, and I forgot. Oh, sorry. I was just going to mention, I forgot to say something really cool about um, Tuesday. It's, it's the, uh, and Glenn mentioned the flat course, which, which always sells out. That's all day. But with that, we actually have our first year that we're doing the young surgeon skills boot camp, which is um, it's, it's, I don't think you need to feel like you're missing out on either. It's, it's really for the people that really want to brush up on their soft tissue dissection, there's the flap course. And then the young surgeon skills boot camp is uh, kind of the more um, like orthopedic bone ligament tendon type of things. And we've partnered with industry to give us a lot of, um, uh, of things that we can try that the, um, the participants can use um, like with their own hands um, on um, uh, specimens. And then, uh, there's also a concurrent Arthrex, uh, dry arthroscopy course that was yeah. done last year. That was so well received that, uh, that's also happening on Tuesday. So Tuesday is just, there's three kind of parallel things that you can do, which are awesome. And that's in addition to the resident fellows review course. I forgot to mention that, but I think that that's going to be super sweet. Yeah. All of it sounds great. I, I, uh, I don't know that we need to go through each of the pre-courses. Um, I'm, I'm feel fortunate that I'm participating in one and I really like how I think this probably exemplifies what you guys were, were after. Uh, Peter Waters, who is certainly a, a more senior member, uh, is leading a pediatric and congenital pre-course. Um, and Lindley Wall, who is my partner, is working with Dr. Waters to lead that course. And I think it, it does marry the concept of uh, someone who's always up there, someone who's going to be up there more and more. And, and I've looked at that, um, the plan for that pre-course, and it's awesome. And they all are. So kudos to you guys for putting together wonderful, wonderful pre-courses. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, we appreciate it. Yeah, and then they keep going on Thursday, the pre-courses when opening ceremonies gets going. Another thing we try to do this year that's a little different, but I think it'll be well received is we tried to, when the general paper sessions come out, you know, they land in between symposium and things along those natures. We tried to leave it so that if there's a symposium on nerve, and then right after that are papers, that those are the nerve papers. If there's a symposium on pediatrics, right after that would be the peds papers. So that likely the same people that would want to hear about that particular topic can stay for that. We tried to marry those up. Now there's a few that just don't always fit into the perfect little bowl. So we have potpourri papers where you'll get a sort of an array of papers that fit into a lot of categories. There may not have been enough of to fulfill one full category, but I think for certain people that have a real vested interest, say in nerve or in peds like you, then they can get a lot of that in one place and not have to feel like they're running all around to get it. Yeah, and if I could just add to that, um, I mentioned we had um, like over 600 uh, paper submissions and uh, much thanks to the annual planning committee, they went through, um, as you guys know, they um, it's, it's sometimes painstaking to go through and, and score those, but they did. And Glenn and I went through every single one and picked per those different um, categories of paper sessions, which which, which fits most of the time with the symposia, like really, really um, uh, innovative, but also really practical things that you're like, ah, um, oh man, like, what do I do this or that? Like, it's a simple question, but no one's answered it. We've picked those type of papers. And so uh, I don't know if I should say this on Zoom, but I'd be the first to admit that, um, or on the podcast, that a lot of times the paper sessions, I'd peace out and, and go like talk with friends and stuff like that. But I think these are, I think if you just tr maybe just give us your trust and oblige us, if you just go to one of the first paper sessions, I think you'll find that these papers are all really, really good that will, will influence your practice in somehow. Yeah, I think that's a great point, Peter. It's exactly what the effort was. It's really because there's certain papers that are interesting, but maybe not as practical that we that some years would get in that this year we try to really put it towards what is the person that flies to Boston and sits in there going to really want to hear. And that's what we really try to target with the papers. Love it. Love it. So high level overview, um, opening ceremonies Thursday afternoon. Um, ICLs Thursday afternoon, Friday afternoon, Saturday morning, um, and yep. tons of ICLs, right? I mean, just an incredible number of people talking about anything and everything you want to hear about. 
pack. Yep, exactly. Yep. There, there's, uh, there's just a ton. And then uh, I know everyone's probably going to be uh, tired by Saturday, but that's when we have our post courses. Um, there's the awards sessions there as well. But the post courses at the end are kind of the non- um, non-clinical things. So there's a, there's a coding and coding and billing reimbursement uh, post course. And there's a really, really uh, awesome uh, balance and wellness post course, which I know sounds uh, kumbaya-ish, but um, we, we tasked the uh, chairs to, um, you know, really pick um, things that uh, will help us not burn out in our careers. And I think we have some amazing guest speakers. Uh, it's going to be really, really good. And at the end, there's a um, post course on um, education and how anyone that's interested in education, just to give them kind of the up to date teaching principles and skills to be more effective in that. So it's from start to finish. I think it's just, it's just, it's super busy. Yeah. Good busy. 14 pre-courses, 60 ICLs, 20 symposiums, and three post-courses, in yeah. addition to all the papers and everything else. So there's a lot of content. It's incredible. It's incredible. And who is the presidential guest speaker? Um, so Brazil is the guest nation. And so Bertelli is the international guest speaker. And then Dr. Greenberg has a really interesting, so the presidential guest speaker is a master. For those of you who don't know, Dr. Greenberg is a master woodworker. And his teacher, who is one of the top woodworkers in the world, is going to be the presidential guest speaker. Yeah, exactly. And and I actually had to Google him, Glenn, when he said that he was going to be the guest speaker. And I first pulled up his like bio and I was like, oh, this can't be the right person. But <laughs> <laughs> the more I looked and, and Jeff has assured us that um, he had this relationship with uh, who was his teacher, I guess, now friend, um, that it's just going to just uh, just, um, I think it's going to just blow you away. It's going to be, it's going to be that good. And, and if, if you don't know Dr. Greenberg, um, I think he's, uh, I, I think he, if he could, he would just have everyone just in probably jeans and, and like, uh, a collared shirt or something like that. Um, but, uh, he, he wanted to do some things that were true to just his nature. I think the nature that we all really endear and, and love. And, um, I think this is just a great start to it. I think everyone will be engaged. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And then spread right between the, that and the international to the two founders lectures, which it's hard to get much better than James Chang and Scott Cozen. So they'll, they'll be amazing. So really, those four are going to be incredible. Awesome. Well, I was already excited just because I hadn't been to enough meetings lately. I'm more excited now. I know our listeners will agree. And uh, I know you guys are looking forward to the meeting. I know you guys will be super happy when the meeting is a success and is over. Um, but, uh, listen, it's been hard work. I know you've had great support from the hand society because Angie and the team do a remarkable job, but thank you, uh, from all of us for everything you put into this. And I can't wait to get there. Thanks, thank you so much for letting us talk about this. It's, it's been a joy and, um, yeah, congratulations on the podcast. It, it is easy listening. Yeah. You, you, you guys just have like the great, like podcast zoom voice. Thank yeah, you. They're set up for it. You guys have done a phenomenal job. I mean, it's great to hear my residents and fellows talking about how much they love it. And yeah. You to take time away from your kid who's home from college right now or coming home any second now is uh, even greater. So we appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you guys. Um, I will, I'm sure, see you guys soon. If not, I will see you in Boston. Thanks, buddy.